Okay, so now we're going to be looking at how we can design the submission form on the Oxford Abstract system. So to do this, we'll go down to the submission form tab on the left hand side. And then from here is where we really have control over the submission form and how it looks and what it does. So the first things we can look at is that we can preview the submission form at any time, just using this button here. So this is great for you know, getting an idea of what your submitters are going to experience when they fill out the form. So you can see, of course, your event logo is at the top. And then we can see details about the event and the questions. The next thing we can do is we can edit the header and footer. So these are sort of like welcome and thank you messages that you can add into the submission form. So you can see here that we have a footer on the form. Thank you for your submission. And we can see that in the preview down here at the bottom. There are lots of things you can add into the uh, header and the footer. You can have images, links, tables, and so on. So you can really give a lot of information this way. We are also able to charge submission fees, which is covered in a separate video. We can also link to the IEEE copyright. So for this, we need the publication title and the art source code. If uh, you want any help with this, just con contact us and we can help you. Okay, so the next thing we can do is actually look at the questions themselves. When your event is first set up, you'll have some default questions such as the title, abstract, authors and affiliations, and so on. You can delete or add as many questions as you like. So to do this, we go to the Add Question button. So as we create the question, we can see a preview on the right-hand side. So at the moment, I've got selected a standard abstract question. So going, moving down the list on the left-hand side, we can see there's a large array of questions that we can ask. So you know anything really from checkboxes, radio buttons, file uploads. So I won't go through the whole list here, but just be aware that there are many, many questions that we can create. And we can preview them at the same time by clicking on them on the left hand side. If we want to go ahead and create one of these questions, we can create the question here. So now all we have to do is just fill out the boxes. We can add a description. As we've chosen a radio button here, we'll have to add some options as well. And then at the bottom, we say uh, we we say what the settings for this question are. So is it in the poster gallery? Is it shown to the reviewer? Will the question and the response be in the abstract book? Will they be in the program? And finally, is the question required? So is it a mandatory question? Another great thing that I can do here is I can preview the question as I'm building it. So here it's, it's a very simple question, but I can see how is my question going to look? If I add a description as well, I'll see that start to come up here as well. Okay, so let's now have a look at how we can edit some existing questions. So let's take the abstract question, for example. If I click into this question, I can again change any of these settings and I can preview the question as I'm changing it. So this one here is a text editor question. So this means I can change the type of text editor that we're using. So at the moment we have option four selected. If I change this to option one, we can see that the text editor in the preview changes also. We 
go back to the form. So now we can have a look at some other, other parts. So we've had a look at the question settings, but we can also change display settings. So this is whether we are, want to show this particular question at any one time, or do we want to hide it or make it read only? So making questions read only is really useful for things, uh, for situations where maybe people have submitted and then you want to reopen the submissions to allow them to maybe upload a full paper. So what we can do here is make the questions such as the title or the abstract read only questions. So when the submitters log back in, they can't change the responses to those questions, but they can still see them. If you have a multi-stage event, it's important to be aware that we can select which stages we are editing up at the top. So we can have actually multiple stages open at one time. So if I click into a question and edit it, it's important to know that this edit will, be, um, will carry through into the other questions. In, um, on the other stages. So here I've edited the abstract question and we can see that on the other stage that the abstract question is also edited. So they're effectively the same question. What we can do is change the visibility or the display settings um, on a stage by stage basis. So if I make this particular question hidden on this stage that won't affect the, the display settings on the other stage. So another thing we need to be aware of is that we can delete questions. So for this, we can select the question or click into the question and then we can delete. It's important to know that if we do delete a question, we can also reinstate that question if we've deleted it by accident. To do this, we just go to the view deleted questions and we can see the questions that we've deleted in the past and also when that question was created and also if there have been any responses to that question in the past. So we just click here and then we can reinstate that question. Another thing we can do is change the order of the questions. To do this, we simply click and hold on the question and then we can drag it into its new position. Okay, so this sums up how we can design and edit our submission form. Thank you.